Hi guys. guys! Welcome back to our channel. Hope everyone's well and having a magical day. Yay. Right, so unfortunately this is going to be our last video in our series about Disneyland Paris table service. Um, we, so we've already done Waltz, we've done Auberge as well, which you can find in the suggested videos up there. Or maybe up there. One above of them. my head, it'll be there. Above, there. Some, above someone's no. head, floating through the depth. If not, we've got a playlist, so you can oh, find that. Anyway, <laughs> today um, it's, a, it's actually one of our favourite ones that we did while we were there, and this is Bistro Chez Remy, which is the Ratatouille restaurant mm -hmm. located in Disney Studios. Yes, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yes. And it's situated in one of, I think, the most beautifully themed parts of Disneyland Paris. So it's in this little French area and it's actually like Paris, but <laughs> Um And it's got so much Disney magic there, like the theming is really good. So there's like a fountain that's got little details from Ratatouille, the film on it. Yeah. So there's like wine or champagne bottles um, and like little rats scattered around and there's a little carving of gusto over like one of the entrances which is just a really nice touch um, and there's also like little cobbles which are obviously very typically French yeah. and there's a gift shop called Chez Marianne which I love for obvious reasons <laughs> um, yeah it's just really lovely I love the theming there yeah it's kind of like what most people think France should be like because it's all like it is all so stereotypically French, but then it's so much more clear and everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably nice. Um, but then the restaurant itself, it's sort of a French cuisine style, so traditional French. Uh, of course, everything is served with ratatouille, obviously. <laughs> um, but it does get really, really busy in there, so you do need to sort of do the whole 60 days in advance or else you have sort of no chance, of, especially during sort of peak season, you have no chance of getting a reservation. And it is only open for lunchtime because Hollywood Studios, because <laughs> Disney Studios closes at about six o'clock. So yeah. because it's a much shorter day there, it gets much more packed. So you have to book quite far in advance to get it conceived. So the vibe of Bistro Chez Remy is um, upmarket but sort of laid back. And the theming is really nice. Um, it's very, very immersive. So as soon as you get in there, you feel like you've actually been shrunk to the size of a rat, yeah. which is really, really cool. So there's like plates as backrests, like huge, huge plates. And there's like plant parts that are the size of like two grown men. Yeah. And um, there's like a colander with lights coming through it as like one of the light features. Yeah. So yeah, it's really cool. Oh yeah, people have to leave like massive bottles of wine. And I think one of my favourite ones was um, one that was kind of like a drying rack with all the dishes. There was loads of plates lined up. And then in between the plates was a load of tables. Those were like the tables for sort of like six people. Yeah. So you had people sat in between the plates. Oh, yeah, really, really and the cocktail was, umbrellas. Yes, yeah, the cocktail yeah. umbrellas were really good. What was our, our table? We were sort of, we just had a normal table where the chairs were really cool. The chairs were sort of like wine corks. Wine sort cork topper. Yeah, things, like the little, okay. yeah, the little metal that you get on top of a wine cork, mm. it was bent into the shape of a chair. Yeah. But it just in the waiting area you sort of saw Remy's Shrine to Gusto, and you had sort of all these different newspaper clips that he collected, you had sort of like the key to um, Gusto's first restaurant and his cookery book and everything. And then you just sort of got a chance to sort of wait and look around all of that bit before your maitre d' led you into the main part of the restaurant. I would say, I think the only thing which they could do to make it more immersive was they turned it into a sort of meet and greet restaurant. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Why? Why is this not idea, happening? Like, like we were sitting there at the time. We we're like, oh my god, would I get to meet Remy? <gasps> That'd be amazing. I mean, we knew that we wouldn't, but it just—it would just make sense. It's such yeah. a great restaurant. The theming is great, and it's like it's probably one of the best places in Disneyland Paris for like decent food and theming. So it's just yeah. that extra little bit. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Like if they did it like they do it, be our guest in Walt Disney World, yeah. where you eat your food, and then as you're leaving, um, you get to meet. Uh, Remy sort of in his little chef hat and his little apron and then you'd be like, oh I really love the Ratatouille meat. Yeah. Yeah, so like a, a like be, I guess you get to meet Beast as you're leaving the castle. Yeah, and you're you like, Remy, thanks for like, what your chef did for us. Yeah, Beast. exactly. You didn't actually make it, but Remy, you'd be like, you actually made the food. Exactly. Thank you very much. You didn't just enslave people to do it or whatever Beast does. Yeah. I do love Beauty Beast, but morals do. Yeah. Morals. So I ate from the Emil menu which is uh, $39.99 for the three courses. And I had a really good meal, I really enjoyed it. So my first um, course was a salad with artichoke heart, whatever that is. Whatever you ate in the <laughs> And, um, and be beetroot, and I don't really like beetroot or artichoke very much, but it was either that or 
the duck or whatever it was that you got and we like to try different things. The salad was, it was quite nice, it was okay when it did come out though, it came out in the weirdest bowl ever. Um, it was like, it was, like that sort it of was wonky and I couldn't eat it very well so it took me about 45 it was, minutes to it was just eat kind of like a half moon sort of thing. Yeah, it was very, very good. So you're trying to eat it and you're like, okay, I can't eat it from this side because it's too high, but I can't eat it from this side or else it just sort of like chucks it out. I had to sort of tip it in the end. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not quite that though. Very weird. Um, and then for my main, I had a steak, chips, and ratatouille, um, which was all very nice, quite tasty. Um, the chips were okay, they weren't great. Um, the ratatouille was really nice, but um, it was just sort of arranged like a, a regular ratatouille because yeah. um, I ate from um, the standard menu rather than the premium like you did. But um, my dessert was uh, the chocolate mousse, which was chocolate mousse, <laughs> chocolate mousse, <laughs> which was so good. It was massive though, it was huge. Um, so I got three courses, you mm. got two, right? so we shared it and yeah. it had a 25th anniversary wafer in it. And, oh, I do remember it being good. It was really good. I wish I could have saved it, but we needed to sort of <laughs> get on with the rest of our day, but it was very nice, very good. Yeah, it was really nice. Um, so I ate from the Linguini menu, which was then 48 euros, I believe. Um, so not much more than yours, only a tenner more than yours. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it was a lot better, it was definitely worth the extra bit of money. Um, so for my starter I had some foie gras. Um, which was really, really nice. I saw that I hadn't really had foie gras that often before I went over there because you don't really get it in the UK. Yeah. Um, but I got like a slight obsession with it when I went over there. I was like, oh my god, it's so good. Yeah, you got it in Paris as well, didn't you? Like yeah. actual Paris. Yes, so it was really good. I tried to get some on the way back, but it was like 200 quid for a little block. I was like, nope, not happening. <laughs> um, and I think it came with a sort of a fig sort of jam and then like a savoury brioche roll with it as well, which was, oh, it was damn good, good. It was pretty damn good, because it was, it was so creamy as well, and it had sort of this big, long streak of sort of, um, like, buttery fat sort of with it, which doesn't sound good, but it just makes it so creamy. I didn't like that bit. <laughs> just makes it so creamy. So, oh. For my main, it had sort of an upgraded version of what Marianne had on hers. Um, so you get the beef fillet, which is like a really nice piece of steak. I think it was a 400 grams, something like that. Huge. Um, so it was a decent size, um, some potato gratin, Gratin. Potato gratin. <laughs> um, with sort of like a cheesy brie sauce, which is a, which I was made of. Oh, I was like so creamy, it was great. Uh, really creamy. And then obviously the main part of it is the ratatouille. Um, the ratatouille, really good. So when you get on the premium menu, it sort of um, it serves it exactly how it is in the film. When he serves it, you get it as sort of the spiral shape with the tomato sauce drizzled on top, as opposed to in the bowl where it's um, all mixed together, like it's the traditional fashion. Yeah. I wish I got the premium menu. I yeah. Should have just, I should have just bitten the bullet and paid the extra yeah. eight euros or whatever. And obviously, like the ratatouille is the main thing. You get something that's uh, served in the style of confit bialdi. I think that's how you say it. Anyway, I'm sorry, I, I know so. I'm butchering. You. <laughs> Um, but that's the very specific style like he serves it in the film. But I don't understand why you would go to the Ratatouille restaurant and not have the Ratatouille like it is in the film, as opposed to the Pezza version that Colette says it is. It's the same ingredients, it is the same dish. But it's like how it is in the film! That makes me sound so silly, but, but you know, it is definitely worth upgrading to the premium menu. Yeah. Yes. Um, I would say in terms of the service we have there, we weren't left waiting for anything. Mm. Um, everyone was like quite attentive. The only issue we had was when we were waiting for um, the bill or the check or whatever you want to call it um, because for some reason it just took them a while to come over and because we wanted to get on with the rest of our day you ended up going to the front desk yeah. to pay because it was just easy. Because it was just taking too long. Mm. But apart from that the service was really good. They were the, they didn't do anything wrong, but they didn't do anything amazing. So I just say it was pretty standard. Yeah, yeah. Like the food was the food was wore out pretty quick, considering it was quite busy in there. Yeah, so. yeah, it was really busy in there. Yeah. But I say their service was good. No one was rude or anything. They yeah. seated, they seated us quite quickly, and then they were quite nice. They were good as the food was wore out quickly. Yeah. So there was nothing really to complain about, but also like nothing to write home about. Um, the atmosphere as well for the restaurants, I thought, was really, really good. Mm -hmm. As well. Um, 
like I say, it is a great place for families to eat because of all of the because of the theming and all the decor and everything like that. It is really, really family friendly. There's quite a lot of families in there. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't louder. There wasn't any screaming children or anything. Everyone's just sort of enjoying their food, enjoying the decor and everything, walking around going, oh my God, it's a giant wine bottle. Yeah, like, it wasn't, that. it didn't get sort of leery or anything, even though there were loads and loads of people in there, because sometimes when restaurants are that busy, um, it can be quite overwhelming and it's not very relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, maybe you sort of parents were just like, this place is expensive, you sit and you behave. But I think that was the same for um, Auberge, but Auberge was far louder. Yeah. And it was a lot like busier and more stressful. And that was even more expensive, so I'm not sure why that Yeah, was. well I think of Auberge is because people are excited to be meeting the princesses, like the kids can't control their emotions, they're just like... <laughs> control their emotions. Discipline <laughs> your mind. Yeah, but it was very busy. Um, either side of us, actually, we had sort of um, one little girl to the right of us, and then we had a family to the left of us, and it was completely fine. Sort of like, like yeah, it's a really great atmosphere, restaurant, and you get lots of hours in there, but it still seems quite relaxing. Yeah, and another thing I would say actually is that you are quite close to the people. If you're in a two-person table, you are pretty close to the people next to you, um, like. I yeah, was I about I was about half a half a meter away from the girl next to me, maybe. So if you're going somewhere for like your one fancy, like relaxing, romantic meal, don't go there because you don't get like much personal space. It's not like an invasion of privacy, yeah, but sort of like this one. no, but it is sort of like that kind of gap. But overall, we give Bistro Share me four big heads. So I will get five. I think the main sort of reasons we're not giving it five is because Remy should be meeting there and because you do, I feel, need to sort of get the premium menu to get the proper experience, but we did enjoy our meal there. Yeah, like I say, if we're giving it five Mickey heads, that would pretty much say it is like one of the best restaurants, like you have to go there or else sort of you haven't lived unless you've been here and Although it is sort of, it is a must, it's not the best experience you'll ever have in the whole of Disney. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be a special one when we get the family kids. <laughs> um, but no, so like I said, the service was good. So, and the food was all right. But like you said it's quite expensive and you have to get the premium menu. There is actually more expensive menus as well. We didn't get the expensive is, yeah. menu. Um, that's if you want to get sort of wine with it and then sort yeah. of upgrade everything again. Yeah, I think it, is it 70 euros or something like that? Yeah. But the wine? Yeah, it goes up to like quite, it goes up to quite it's a bit. You can spend quite expensive. a bit of money in there. Mm. Um, so again, it could, it could have got five Mickey heads, but there was just those few little things yeah. back in. Yeah. So well, thank you for watching. Um, make sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe for all of our future Disney adventures, Disney videos. Um, like I say in a couple of months' time, we're going to be in Disneyland California, mm -hmm. Anaheim. We're going to be doing lots of vlogging there. Again, lots more um, food reviews. Hopefully, someone will get the five Mickey heads. Never know. So yeah, be sure to keep a look out for those. Mm -hmm. Comment below as well if you've been to um, Bistro Chez Remy. Let us know what you thought of it. If you agree with our review, do you disagree? What was your yeah. What was your favourite dish? Thank you very much for watching, guys. We'll see you real soon. Bye. Bye guys.